episode of Jacob's House of Rock. And today we've got a special unboxing video. So for those of you guys who are not really familiar, um, I did a video a little while ago where I uh, unboxed and did a review of my uh, very own ch Chinese copy Rickenbacker bass. Um, and that, you know, that review got really popular and it's the, probably the most popular video I've done on any of my YouTube channels. And uh, since then I've, you know, done some modifications to that and it's been this cool little series that I've been doing. However, uh, over quite a while I've had an interest in maybe picking up one of the more up-to-date um, next generation type models that uh, China is putting out. Uh, so I went on AliExpress and I ended up uh, picking up this thing. Now I have a pretty long and complicated story of how uh, I got to uh, how this got to me, um, and I'm gonna get into it as I unbox this box here. So you can see big styrofoam box just covered all around with tape. And you can feel there is definitely something inside. So let's get started. <clears throat> so initially I wanted a really accurate one and I uh, found that they started doing uh, these bases with neck throughs. Meaning that the neck is like a one plank of wood that goes all the way through the body. And that, you know, helps to yeah, get a nice bit of resonance in, in the instrument and help with some of the tension and stuff like that. Because you don't have, like, uh, necks that are screwed on or glued in or all that sort of stuff. It's all one piece of wood. Uh, which is very uh, much more accurate to how the real things are made. Uh, aside from this, I also wanted to... So hold on, I'm just trying to figure out where the seam line is on this uh, styrofoam box in here. Uh, but I also wanted to get this uh, base... Uh, to, you know, be more accurate in a couple of other ways. I wanted it to be the right scale length, the neck to be the right width, and the placement of the bridge and stuff like that, and the amount of frets and all that to be correct. Now, some of those things have been corrected. However, I had a lot of issues with this seller. Um, they ended up uh, saying, yeah, we can do all that. And then the first picture they showed me was literally the same stock instrument that they wanted uh, to give me from the get-go, like this this completely non-modified instrument, not even in the right color. It was just like a clear gloss color, the one they showed me. It's like, yeah, we did it. I waited for like months and months and months. Uh, and this is during the time that sometime in the beginning of the year, about February, they have like this holiday in China. So that made it take even goddamn longer. Because uh, so I had to wait many months for them to, you know, make this base. And it turned out to be, you know, not what I was looking for. So then, then, you know, I told them no, and they said, okay, we'll get back to it. And, you know, I forgot about this thing, and then maybe, like, it's now June, basically. Like, I ordered it last year or something. And uh, now, finally, in this part of the year, um, they ended up, you know, getting back to me, and they finally had a more accurate version to what I was looking for. At least it was the right color. Um, but turned out they didn't get the scale length right or any of that sort of stuff. They did, however, get the f amount of frets correct and the position of the bridge. Not really that accurate on the bridge pickup and stuff like that, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> so I found out the, uh, this box opens up like this from the front. It's been a while since I opened one of these, <laughs> but I am super excited. There we go. Pardon me if I'm a little slow this uh, unboxing, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. One of those uh, winter colds, but hopefully this will cheer me up a little bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really sort of curious what we're going to get with this bass, because this one in theory should be a lot better than that first one, which, you know, I'm going to do a comparison video and a full review of this uh, as soon as I uh, can. So hopefully within a week of this video coming out, the next video should be a review of it. So, got this kind of open. Let's see if we can... Oh, nice thick piece of um, styrofoam, which is good. I, I really hope it was safe in transit. Let me just cut it. There we go. Ooh, so here is our base. <laughs> Looking promising so far. Let's, let's get, him, get her out. Well, she's here in one piece, which is 
promising. Okay. Ooh. Let's have a look. Frets look nice and shiny. So these were, are made to order. So this one was a 2019 build model. Let's have a look. Ooh, I am liking the color of the headstock already. So we have this nice uh, Rickenbacker made in the USA uh, logo here, even though it was made in China. So this is in fact a counterfeit. Um, and those for those people who ask um, about like the legality and all that sort of stuff about these things, I honestly don't care. They overcharge for the real deal. And this is pro probably the only way you can really get these things at a sane price. But yeah, let's have a look at this. Yeah, uh, I'm loving that color there. <laughs> I wanted this in an autumn burst color, which is if you Google autumn burst uh, Rickenbacker, you'll see what I mean. And I sent them some pictures of some genuine ones of those. I was like, I want that color. And so far, so good. Let's have a look. The main body. Just gonna tear this off because, god damn it. I'm waiting too long for this thing. Okay. Ah. And here she is. Okay. Right off the bat, just by appearances alone, this thing looks really nice. Very nice. Um, they, they did a weird binding on this thing, which I wanted a, you know, just a plain cream binding, but for some reason they added this kind of little striping effect to it, uh, which doesn't bother me at all. It actually looks pretty nice. You can see this nice color of the body, and yes, indeed, this is a neck through. You can see the same piece of wood, and I'm just gonna, you know, assume that because this doesn't have that same sort of heel joint that the other one had, that this is indeed the same piece of wood. It definitely looks uh, like it is, and I don't see any evidence of there being any seam lines or anything like that, even though it is kind of dark in here. But that's just how Rickenbackers are painted. So wow, got that. Bit of wood coming in um hopefully maple uh you don't really know what woods they're using with these things but yeah um let's have a look pickups are the same as on my first one by the looks of it we got this sort of uh little humbucker pickup which is you know encased in a to you know a thing to make it look like a classic toaster rickenbacker pickup but um, from what i understand these ones are little miniature humbucker pickups so Actually, these did sound really nice on, on my other base. And we have this like really big, um, uh, in, in this area we have a like a, another little single coil pickup, but it's got really big pole pieces. So hopefully I can kind of show you that there. You can see that. So these are the typical sort of ones they put on these uh, chicken buckers or fake Rickenbackers. And right off the bat, this one looks a lot nicer because the bridge is actually down here. Um, at the lower part of the body instead of kind of like floating up here um, So the bridge on mine which I have swapped out on the the uh, previous one with a hip shot one uh, Again, thanks to the guy who sent me that I bloody well love it and I'm gonna put it on this base um, Assuming that this one is in, in fact the superior base So yeah, we got this sort of um, the typical bridge they use on these things which you know works But it isn't the best uh, like all these little bits here are kind of like floating pieces. It's also floating really high up in the air like all this sort of stuff compared to the first one I got which is a little odd. Um, but yeah these all of this sort of stuff I'm uh, I'm gonna you know swap it out with that hip shot one like I said because uh, the main problem of this bridge and you can fix it other ways is it doesn't account for the radius of the neck because uh, guitar necks aren't completely flat they kind of curve a little bit the fretboard it's very subtle but having the bridge account for that really helps in you know making sure there's not too much fret bars or anything um the there is some you know minor defects that i can already see there's a little bit uh, just if you look on this horn here there's a little bit of that like a uh, binding coming through under uh this bit which should be the wood color like a dark color just under that little stripe section you can see right there uh, so that's the first little defect I can see. Uh, the gloss looks really nice on it. And just like I said, this finish, I'm so glad I chose this color. It is really beautiful, if you can see that there. 
And, oh yeah, one of the main things that they improved on with this base, up on the, uh, compared to the first one, is this has a flat top. Look at that. Like a genuine Rickenbacker. You can see that little shine there, we can see my reflection. <laughs> um, the first one had like this curved sort of flat, um, had like a, a cut out edge on the side here, which made it sort of contoured more and it was really weird. Like I didn't, it didn't bother me too much, but this is how it's meant to be. It's meant to be flat like this. And there is like a slight little contours on the inside here and here, very subtle, but that's accurate to what Rickenbackers actually have, which is really great. Also really love just this shape. This Rickenbacker shape is phenomenal. Um, something about this horn here uh, kind of seems like this angle here should be a little bit wider or something like that. So it looks a little, little, little bit off. But, all things considered, not, not that bad looking. Neck seems to feel nice. Let's have a little... Bear in mind these uh, strings are way loose, so... Yeah, um, I'm gonna tune those up, yeah, sorry, I am going to tune those up in a second and give you guys a little demo of it. Um, I don't have a bass amp here, but I can try it through my little Laney com uh, guitar amp back there. Um, but yeah, all things considered, so far so good. Let's have a look, I'll just kind of give you a nice view of this thing. Now, I did ask them to do a lighter colored fretboard. I didn't want this sort of almost ebony color that they used here. Uh, I wanted this to be a really light colored rosewood. I'm not sure what exact wood they use in Rickenbackers, but it's almost the same color as this. Is the fretboard color on a real Rickenbacker for the most part. This is like very uniform dark wood. Like, yeah, it looks like ebony or, or similar to like a slightly more shiny rosacer, uh, which if you have experience with like Harley Benton, guitars they use a rosé surf fretboard which is like actually a treated maple to make it look really dark like rosewood so this is just like a almost black fretboard which not what i wanted but um not the worst thing in the world uh the binding around the bottom of the neck here isn't perfect but it wasn't on the first one that i had either kind of rough there but you know whatever um and this uh little enclosure here uh, for the bridge pickup is it, It's the same one that they use on all of these sort of bases It's not my favorite one because I really want to get my hands on a genuine Rickenbacker um, I don't know what you'd even call this one. It's like a little base plate or a, a Mounting plate or something like that that this bridge pickup is mounted in with this like little over thing that goes over it But it, this one's a really simple flat piece of metal and a bent thing the Rickenbacker genuine ones have like a little more shape to them and also the bridge pickup is very far from the actual strings uh, in this thing which is kind of odd um, what else to say yeah the just like my first one this um, pick guard has been um, isn't it's not polished along the edges they didn't do any sort of uh, polishing or they didn't give it a little bit of an angle on this this is just look like this just looks like it's come straight off the machine it even stars the plastic over it which is good like the little foil that you can peel off you can kind of still see it peeling up in some areas I don't know if you guys can quite see it but <clears throat> you can kind of make it out there on that screw but the edge of this thing is not that great it's you know, I'm going to have to take this pick guard off and properly sand it and polish the edge. Um, tone pots are the same sort of ones that, you, you know, the vintage style or the jazz bass style ones they always use on these things. Um, I'll see, I'll change, I'm going to change out all these electronics later, but I'm going to do a video again showcasing the interior electronics of this thing. I'm curious if they still have the out of phase issue that the previous one had when you had both pickups on. Uh, they might have changed it up, they might have not. It doesn't matter because I can adjust that. Um, and a really cool thing about this particular model and the new ones that they're doing is it has t two outputs. I think these are just two mono outputs. Um, but if you are ambitious and if you can afford to find the pieces, uh, then you can change this into a Rico sound. 
uh, feature, which I m <laughs> may do. Um, I really want to, but uh, getting the jacks to make this thing is really difficult. They're very expensive uh, unless you live in America, because just the postage alone for them for me, from what I found online, is insane. It would cost me like $50 just to get one jack to make this have Rico sound, which is m pretty much just a novelty to me. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to still, you know, if you guys are able to donate a j uh, some of those electrical components, then I can do, uh, try and do a really solid tutorial for you guys. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this part. <laughs> um, we'll just note that for some reason the heel on this uh, base here is really thick. This part here on a uh, genuine Rickenbacker, it's pretty much in line with this lower horn. So this is uh, by like a couple of centimeters. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, wider, but you know, unless you're really keen on playing some really high pitch stuff on your um, on your Rick bass, then I don't really see too big an issue with that. It's just an odd little uh, design flaw, <laughs> design choice that they put on this thing. Um, and uh, another thing is, even though this bass has a slightly better positioned bridge pickup, um, I don't think they actually changed the positioning of this from my other bass. The only difference is they moved the, um, what would you call it, the bridge back a little bit, so you actually have some access to the strings behind this um, little metal uh, bridge plate here. I don't know what else to call this. Um, but you have access to the strings here, which is something that you barely could do on the other uh, chicken barker that I sh uh, showcased in my first review. Um, but I think the main difference is they just moved the, the bridge back, so you have space here, and they uh, extended the pick guard, so it's just a little bit further down to make it look a little bit better. But I really wish that they would have actually moved this a bit higher to be more flush with the pick guard and kept the pickguard, you know, um, either like this or how it used to be. So that's just something to note there. Uh, so you can really tell by the positioning of this switch and this thing. A real Rickenbacker, from what I've seen, tends to have this switch kind of in right in the middle of the, of, um, right in line with, hold on, that screw there. Uh, so it sh this thing should have been, this bridge should have been moved up a little bit to be in line with this switch. Now I don't even know if this switch is accurately placed because all of this stuff could have been shifted around because again this is a copy, a counterfeit, it's not um, the actual one made to the exact specifications of the ones, uh, the real thing. But I'm, I'm liking this more than my first one. I definitely love it color-wise and it just, the um, it looks better the orientation of all the components on here. Uh, despite those little nagging bits that I wish they just changed up a little bit and again I'll, I'll, just the proportions of the neck are better with the less like there the, the downside is you have less frets but the upside is this bridge is more correctly positioned um, now the scale length on this one I don't remember what it is I'm gonna put it up on screen here now so it should be uh, somewhere here so that's the scale length that this Rick, this copy is, and this is the scale length that a real Rickenbacker should be. So there you can see there's not that much difference, but there is a little bit there. I did get a minute discount because of those things and because they didn't implement all the changes I did. All right, so I've tuned it up kind of roughly. It's gonna keep going out of tune for a bit because, you know, it's a new instrument. The strings haven't been sort of, um, what's the word? They haven't been, um, kicked in a little bit. <laughs> they still need to kind of uh, stretch out a little bit before they kind of lock in and stay in tune for a while. So expect it to go out of tune for a bit. But I'm just going to kind of give you a quick demo of this. Again, this is going to be recorded through my webcam, which has shitty audio quality, and it's a bass guitar running through a guitar amp. So expect it to sound a little bit tinny as compared to a bass amp or anything like that. But yeah, let's just kind of go and get see how this thing feels. Oh, sorry.
let's try it. So that's the bridge pickup. This is the bass pickup, the neck pickup. Let's see if this has that um, um, out of phase kind of effect, like the first one that I got did. So again, the bridge, neck, in between. You know what? I think it actually is in phase by the sound of it. is the um, in this Chinese wiring this is the neck volume right so I'm guessing this is the neck tone yeah so neck volume neck tone um, bridge volume bridge tone which I think is a little bit different to how they do it on the um, on my other bass but I kind of forget <laughs> I have to be, be like near it to actually remember but, but I'm gonna do a big comparison with my other bass in, in my next video anyway This is my little um, 
poorly recorded demo of this Rickenbacker copy bass from China, aka my brand new next generation Chickenbacker. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more vids on this thing. Like I said in my next video, I'm going to be doing a demo and review of this thing properly recorded with an actual microphone, with an actual bass amp. Over our first impressions playing this thing, uh, the fret work's not too bad. It is a little bit buzzy, but that's part of the sound that I kind of like out of a Rickenbacker. Like my favorite bass players that use Rickenbackers, of course, Getty Lee and Chris Squire. And their sound is very aggressive and they kind of dig in to really get some of that fret buzz in there anyway. So it's not that big a deal. And it feels uh, already right out of the box a lot more playable than my previous bass. Um, I am really liking the neck through thing. Uh, the body is just you know, beautifully done, this nice uh, flat uh, square design. Uh, the shape is pretty good, except for, like I said, this horn here seems a little bit off, but um, if you don't focus on it, not that big a deal. Um, the coloring is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, all this on this whole instrument here. Uh, so yeah, all round, so far so good. Um, so yeah, do be sure to let me know what you think, if you have any um, ideas of what I can kind of do to improve this thing further. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna replace the bridge obviously with that Hipshot one. In fact, I'm gonna replace all the components, uh, the electrical and the pickup stuff, with the stuff that I have modified my previous bass with. So I'm going to install the actual Rickenbacker pickups into this, replace the bridge, and in theory, this should be a really really close replica of the original thing. Again, with some you know minor little issues. And one thing that I want to ask you guys is if you guys know where to get this kind of little mounting plate for the bridge pickup here that isn't like super expensive because I have, you know, I've, I see them online but they go for like 200 bloody dollars or something. Um, and it's just literally a little plate of metal. So it shouldn't, it should be really a lot cheaper than that. Um, because, you know, otherwise this does the job, but I would like the look of the original kind of thing. So if you guys can direct me in, in the, the direction where I can find one of those, that would be bloody awesome. If not, that's fine. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of this thing. What do you think of these uh, chicken barkers anyway? And how do you feel about the whole thing with, you know, just Rickenbacker bases in general? being so goddamn expensive. Um, and I'm going to leave you on one final tip. If you are looking to buy one of the, these things, be really firm and determined about the modifications that you want. Don't give in to their, like, just giving you stuff um, and being like, okay, is this okay? And they show you a picture. Um, ask them, does this have this modification that you asked for before? And if they say no, then tell them to do it again. It will bloody well um, frustrate you and take a bunch of time, but then you'll get the base that you want. Now, I couldn't be bothered and I got ended up with this thing. And I'm pretty happy with it, but some for some people, it might not be enough for them, so, you know. Um, and yeah, with that, um, keep on rocking, people. Peace out, and see you in the next video.